The study looked at the records of 568 infant deaths in the county. One of its primary findings is that infants who died of SIDS had multiple risk factors. Joining me to discuss this report is Dr. Henry Krauss, pathologist at Rady Children's Hospital, and Kitty Roach, San Diego County SIDS coordinator. Thank you both for being here. Dr. Krauss, multiple risks. Now, explain why that's so important in terms of understanding SIDS. Well, the... Uh the babies who died of sudden infant death syndrome during this entire study period from 1991 to 2008 averaged about three and a half risk factors per baby. And I think with past recommendations about safe sleeping, there's, there's been a tendency to sort of focus on one of those factors. For example, uh, to avoid placing a baby on its stomach for sleep. The importance of this study is to show that over this entire study interval, babies are still being exposed to multiple risk factors and these are additive in their effect. The more risk factors, the higher the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. So we're recommending um, on, from this study that caretakers avoid exposing babies to multiple risks simultaneously to minimize their risk of sudden infant death syndrome. And I want to ask you about some of those risks, but first of all, I, I heard you earlier explaining also this whole idea of the triple risk hypothesis, that when these things come together um, it, it is sort of the reason why you think that, that SIDS occurs. Correct. We, we believe that for the vast majority of babies, only 5% of them had no risk factors in our study, extrinsic risk factors. But w we feel that sudden infant death syndrome is the intersection simultaneously of these three fundamental elements that uh, are occurring in sudden infant death syndrome, the, the age of development, um, the things that characterize the development of baby during its intrauterine life, and then factors uh, around its sleep environment that are intrinsically unsafe. So let's talk a little bit about that then, Kitty. We know that, uh, first of all, the big recommendation is always to put your baby on his or her back. Back to sleep. Now there's a sec there, there's a second risk, a fairly common one that, you're st that the study mm -hmm. found about sharing a bed. Can you tell me a little more about that? Uh, the studies indicate that that is a very big risk factor, that when adults share a bed with an infant, they, the infants can become overheated, there's a risk for overlay. Uh, what we recommend is that a baby sleep in the same room on a separate sleep surface that's firm, covered, uh, babies only in a sleep sack or something like that, for easy access for breastfeeding next to the mother's bed. You can bring the baby to bed to breastfeed and then put the baby back in his or her own surface. The adult beds are often too soft. They have blankets, they have pillows, they have a, a lot of risk in terms of overheating the baby or potential for overlay. Dr. Krauss, was your study able to identify how often sleeping, co-sleeping, this uh, played a role in SIDS? What percentage? Yes. Um, in the early part of the study, only about 20% uh, of the babies were bed sharing. By the end of the study, it, that uh, incidence had doubled. So we're very concerned about the incidence of prone sleep or tummy sleeping went down dramatically from 85 to 30%. But at the same time, bed sharing and baby sleeping on an adult bed, both those factors doubled in, in incidence. And so, again, the importance of emphasizing of trying to avoid all of these risk factors that are under the control of the caretaker. So, so Kitty, when you go out and you meet with families, do you find, uh, in terms of co-sleeping, that seems to be a fairly, uh, uh, no, I wouldn't say common, but popular thing now. We hear a lot about right. it. Um, do you find that families know that this is a risk? Some do. Uh, we actually to use the term bed sharing and co-sleeping, meaning in the same room, uh, room sharing, uh, that that they do know that it's a risk, but especially with a, a new baby that's, you know, uh, the biggest risk for SIDS is two to four months, uh, but it's convenient to breastfeed. There may be a family that doesn't have access to buy a crib where bed, sheeting, bed sharing is a cultural uh, kind of moray and and those are the reasons. Or they think it leads to bonding, more bonding. You know, they have a lot of reasons. The younger the baby, the, uh, the, the greater, greater the, the risk. risk of bed sharing. And we strongly advocate breastfeeding the baby, unless there's some medical contraindication to it. But the, but the baby could be bed fed 
uh, could be breastfed, but then kept on a separate sleep surface mm -hmm. afterwards. So we don't want to we don't want families to think that we're not supportive or recommending breastfeeding. We're very strongly advocating that, but then sleep separate on, have the baby sleep on a separate surface. We're out of time, but I do want to let the people at home know that there's a lot more information about this study and about SIDS at CaliforniaSIDS.com, also on our website, kppbs.org, a link to your study. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you.